In this video, I'll first show some building tips, then I'll walk you through how to make the robot, and at the end, I'll show you how to troubleshoot some common issues. Okay, let's start with a few tips. If you ever have trouble fitting any two pieces together, you can rub some candle wax on the outside edges of the piece being inserted and or on the inside edges of the other piece. This helps because when the wood pieces are being cut by the laser, the glue that holds the plywood together melts and gets on the outside edges of the wood. That glue is kind of tacky and it can make it difficult for the pieces to stick together. The wax covers that layer of glue so it's not quite so sticky and that makes it easier to fit the pieces together. However, that layer of glue on the outside edges of the wood is also what helps these pieces stay together. So only use the candle wax when necessary. Okay, tip number two. If there are two pieces that are too loose and they're falling apart, you can get a very small piece of masking tape, pinch it around the outside of the connector, and then fit it back into where it needs to go. Alternatively, if your robot is completely done and you fine-tuned it and it's working great except something keeps falling out, you can just apply a little bit of super glue to the outside of the fitting. Okay, tip number three. If you need to take something apart by hand, the easiest way to do this is to firmly pinch it and as you pull, wiggle the piece from side to side. However, there's an easier way to separate two pieces. All you need is a blunt, non-sharp butter knife from your kitchen drawer or a small flathead screwdriver. Either way, to remove two pieces more easily than by hand, wedge the tool between two of the parts and then just give it a twist. Repeat on the other side until the part comes loose. You can also use this technique to loosen up a connection that's too tight. Tip number four. If you want to paint the robot, I recommend doing that before assembling it. If you do choose to paint your robot, make sure not to get any paint inside any of the connection points or on the outside of any of the connectors. The first step is to wire up the battery holder to the motor. Make sure to turn the battery holder off so you don't accidentally create a short circuit by crossing the wires. Open up the battery holder and install the batteries so the flat side is touching the spring. The motors have two metal tabs on them that have holes and we're going to use those to connect the battery holder. Take one of the wires, put it through the hole on either of the tabs, fold the wire, and then twist it as many times as you can. When you're twisting the wires, avoid pinching and twisting the metal tab on the motor. If you do that, it might break off. Repeat with the other wire through the hole, fold it in half, and then twist it as many times as you can. In the end, it should look something like this. Give it a light tug and make sure that the connections are strong. It doesn't matter where the red and black wires are connected. Turn it on and make sure that it works. Next, we're going to build a housing for the motor using these rectangular pieces. These ones are for the sides and these ones are for the top and bottom. Start with one of the side pieces. The side with the hole is going to indicate the front of the robot, and this side with the cross connector is going to be where the back of the robot is. When assembling, make sure the cross connector is on the bottom of the motor housing like this. So first, put the motor shaft through the hole and go ahead and attach one of these wheels. Turn on the motor and notice which way the wheel is turning. Remember, this side that has the hole for the motor shaft should be the front of the robot, so we want it to go in this direction. Right now, the motor is spinning in a way that's going to make the robot go backwards. So to fix that, we're just going to flip the motor around like this. Now try it again, and you can see that the wheel is turning in the correct direction. Okay, now before installing the top piece, we need to introduce one more part. Get this fork-shaped piece and put it through this slot in the top piece, like that. When you're attaching this piece to the top of the robot, make sure that this slot goes over this little plastic bit that's at the end of the motor. Okay, now go ahead and add the other side piece. Again, make sure that this cross connector is near the bottom of the robot. We're gonna flip it upside down and attach one of these pieces to the bottom. 
before we go any further, take some wax and rub it onto the handle of that fork-shaped piece near those slots that it's inserted into. Then go ahead and move this up and down a few times to spread the wax around. This piece here is what the dragon will connect to, and this mechanism is what allows it to move up and down as it's flying. So adding wax near those connection points is going to help this move smoother. So after adding plenty of wax in there, take this square piece and close off the end of the robot. Start by just attaching one side like that, and then fold this piece down, working your way onto one connector at a time. This last fitting can sometimes be challenging, and you may need to pry it away from the rest of the robot by a little bit first before you can push down the square piece. You can do that by hand, or now is a great time to use something like a butter knife to very carefully pry that piece away just a little bit, fold this piece down all the way, and then squeeze everything back together. Now repeat on the other side using this piece. Attach it like this, so the wires will go through that hole, and these rounded pieces are facing up toward the top of the robot. Okay, now attach the other wheel, and make sure that the cross-shaped connectors on the wheels are facing the same way. These two connections need to move together at the same time to make the wings flat. Next, we're going to add the small wheels, and to do that, we're going to use these little connector pieces. For this robot, there are many different types of connectors, so I'm going to take a moment to identify each one. There's this cross-shaped hole connector, and its companion piece is the smallest connector. Next, there are these small staple-shaped connectors, then these long staple-shaped connectors, then there's one other staple-shaped connector, and this one has rounded tips. So make sure you're using the right connector at the right time. So going back to the wheels, you will need these small staple-shaped connectors. These two pieces interlock like this. And then the easiest way to complete the connection is to stand it up on your work surface and then use your thumbs to push straight down until they're fully inserted. Okay, repeat one more time until you have two of these. Find the small wheel, which is bigger than this piece. Put the connector through the wheel, then fit it into the cross-shaped hole. The easiest way to do this is to lay the robot on its side, get the connector in position, and then press down using both hands. Repeat on the other side. Next, get these little shoe-shaped pieces. Now fit these into the four slots on the top of the robot with the flat side facing toward the middle. The easiest way to do this is to get it in position and then push and wiggle it at the same time. These pieces are going to hold the battery holder. Okay, if you want, you can turn this on and see if it's working. Now we're going to assemble the dragon, and the first step is to attach these pieces. So start with the smallest piece, and this is going to get inserted into the slot that's nearest to the tail of the dragon. The easiest way to do this is to first just get it in position, then use both hands to grasp the dragon body with your thumbs on top of the small piece, and then squeeze everything until it gets pushed all the way down. Repeat with the next largest piece, and then again with these two identical pieces that have slots on the sides. Now before attaching the wings, make sure that the slots on these two pieces are level with each other, like this. The wings can bend using this laser cutting technique known as a living hinge. It's a really cool way to make wood flexible, but it also makes these pieces fragile. So you've been supplied with an extra just in case one breaks. But if you follow these next steps very carefully, you won't have any of the wings break. Before installing the wing, take the wax and rub it on the inside edges of these slots. This is extremely important and it'll make installing the wings a lot easier. Okay, repeat on the other side. Rub more wax on the inside of the slots for the wings as well. Now get the wing in the correct position. The front of the wing has this long swooping edge, and the back of the wing has these bat wing looking curves to it. Okay, we're ready to attach the wing to the dragon. First, grab the wing right here. Avoid grabbing it by the living hinge, and definitely do not hold it far away from these connecting slots. 
If you do that, when you push these two pieces together, this can bend and break the living hinge. So make sure to hold it firmly near these two slots, but don't grab the slots themselves. Now carefully work the wing onto the body and just push and wiggle it until it gets fully inserted. Repeat on the other side and remember to use plenty of wax. Next, get this connector with the cross-shaped hole and connect this to the underside of the dragon wing with the hole facing toward the front and back of the dragon. Hold the wing firmly and avoid bending it as you insert this piece. Flip it back over and attach this smallest connector to the top of the wing perpendicular to the last connector. And repeat on the other side. Okay, the dragon is done. You can set this aside and return to this part. Now we're going to build the part that connects the wheels to the dragon's wings. Find these long staple shaped connectors and fit them together in the same way as the small ones. Next, put this piece onto the connector, then put one of these spacers behind it and attach this connector to the cross shaped hole in the big wheel. Get it in position, then push down with both hands. You may notice that this piece is a little loose and that's intentional. Next, attach this curved piece onto the wheel connection and repeat on the other side. Now, put it all together. Attaching these curved connectors to the underside of the wings can be a little tricky, so just take your time and use plenty of candle wax to make it easy. When doing this step, turn the wheel so that this connector is positioned in the middle of the motor housing. That will ensure that this curved piece is neither pushing nor pulling on the wing. Interlock these remaining slots on the dragon and at the top of this fork-shaped piece. Gather these staple-shaped pieces that have the rounded tips, put it through the hole in this curved shaped piece, then carefully insert it just part way into the back of this cross-shaped piece under the wing. If these pieces are hard to put in, then rub some wax on the outside. If it's a little tough to put in and you feel like it's stuck in there pretty good, then this side is done. If you feel like it's a little loose and it might fall out, then take another one of these staple shaped pieces and insert it into the other side perpendicular to the first one. You might also notice that this piece is kind of loose in this fitting, and again, that's intentional. It helps it work better if there's a little bit of play in the system. If you want, you can use a pair of adjustable pliers to squeeze those pieces together, but it's not necessary. But again, you don't need this piece in the front if this piece in the back is able to hold this curved shape piece to the wing. Repeat on the other side and you're done. One more thing, your dragon might get hungry from all that burning and pillaging, so make sure to give him a snack. So before getting into troubleshooting, I wanna share one important tip about this particular robot. When you're not using it, rotate the drive wheel so that the connector is positioned in the middle of the motor housing like this. That's going to set the wings to a neutral position so that the connector is neither pushing nor pulling on it, and that will just help with the longevity of your robot. So if your dragon is moving sluggishly or if it's not moving at all, there are a few things you can do. Sometimes when a robot is freshly built, the components are a little stiff and they just need to get moving to loosen up. If it's still not moving, it's probably because there's one part that's generating a lot of friction and it's slowing down the whole mechanism. So first, check to make sure that the drive wheels have a little bit of wobble to them and that they're not pressed extremely tightly up against the motor housing. The other parts that can be generating friction are where this fork-shaped piece connects to the motor housing here on top and here on the bottom. So if that's happening, open up the front of the robot and apply wax all over this fork-shaped piece where it intersects with those slots. One other issue is that these small wheels may not turn, especially if the robot is driving on a smooth surface. In my opinion, that's fine. These wheels don't need to turn, they're just there to minimize friction. However, if you want these wheels to turn more often, you can take them off and apply wax to the connector. This is a great time to use something like a butter knife or a screwdriver to get in between the wheel and the motor housing and give it a twist on one side and then the other until it comes loose. Apply wax on the inside of the small wheel and you can even wax the outside of the motor housing where the small wheel connects. 
and it should turn more often when the robot is driving around. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy your new robot.